Um, so my name is Philip Martin, and I am the co-owner of Philip Martin Gallery here in Los Angeles with my partner, Portia Hine. And um, I hope you've had a chance to meet Portia either at the fairs or uh, at the gallery in our new location in Glassell Park. Um, I'm really excited today to be speaking with Lisa Sanditz, whose work I have followed for quite some time. Um, we have a personal connection, but I really got to see her work at Acme uh, here in Los Angeles uh, in the mid-2000s, and many of you know her work. How are you doing today, Lisa? It's a pleasure to see you. I'm doing well. Thank you. How about you? I'm doing great. So uh, the show is called uh, Strawberry Sun. And as you can see here, it relates to a uh, many of the paintings were made uh, on what I've been describing as the storm raked coast of Newfoundland. Do you want to talk just a little bit about doing a residency and going outside your studio and, and what kind of impact that has for you in your practice? Sure. Um, and thank you for meeting me here today. <laughs> um, and I guess quickly to recognize, too, that there's a lot of complicated and painful things happening out in the world and um, really appreciate everybody taking a little, yeah. a little break to be here with us. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, and to that effect um, also, um, so I had a residency for a month at the Pouch Co Foundation. I was invited by Monica Tapp with seven, um, who put together the group and invited um, eight artists in total to, to go there. Uh, Pouch Cove is at the sort of further furthest east point of the North American continent. Um, point of prides is that you can see the sunrise first uh, from from Pouch Cove. Oh, wow. And um, so spent a month there. I didn't really have a plan except to sort of not make um, big complex paintings. I wanted to do a lot of plein air painting, make mm -hmm. some sketches, get together ideas, get together some color studies. So, um, and I think the next painting in our it is one of your more complex paintings yes. was not made on site. Yes, um, I came back. Yes, I came back and worked on this in the studio back here in New York. Yeah. So, what's that like? You know, you what's it like to be on site and then be back in the studio? Um, well, I've you know, painting outside has has been a part of my practice in the last maybe 10 years and not mm -hmm. really before that. Um, and sometimes that work is just for me to get outside. And sometimes, like I said, it sort of helps me work out some like formal color ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that was really great was just to remember how much I like doing that and how um, sort of lean and economic it is in terms of just not using a lot of paint, you know, painting mm -hmm. pretty small, get, you know, getting exercise um, at the same time. I've been working a lot in the studio lately, which is great too, but it's kind of like this big bulky uh, practice and all like intellectually, mm -hmm. materially and all yep. of the um, ways. So it's been, it was really great to reconnect with that. Mm -hmm. And this is a painting, sometimes in the studio, you'll work on paintings even over years. So this is about four years in duration. Yeah. It's like a it's like a garish saison or something, right? Like how he has those <laughs> those mountain paintings that are, take six years. Um, well, it's really incredible. I mean, this I spent a lot of time with this detail in terms of the feeling of color and and how all the parts of that brush work are coming are coming together. Um, well, thanks, and I and I know as a fellow fellow painter there that you you can uh, appreciate and like geek out on that part too. But yeah, I started that one. That one I actually painted near us, near where I live in the Hudson Valley, and then came back into the studio and worked kind of back into it a couple of times. And it's sort of also taken on a little bit of a different meaning in that it was just like a really interesting kind of gnarled stump um, mm -hmm. that, that's near where we live and is still there. But now the sort of orange sky, which um, we weren't having that kind of like wildfire sky mm -hmm. when I did this a few years ago. And so it sort of has also like become something else in the way that painting, you know, I think has that capacity to grow. Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the things that's been very interesting thinking about your work for this particular show and other shows is even what it means to be a landscape painter at the moment. Do you have any thoughts, thoughts there? Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, when I, you know, I've been doing this for like over 20, 20, over 20, 25 years at this point. And I do mm -hmm. also paint figures more recently and other and interiors. Um, 
and it's just like it's changed so much in that amount of time too i mean climate and ecology were always an issue but they mm -hmm. weren't as um i was gonna say hot hot topic no pun intended mm -hmm. or pun intended sure as it is now um so it does feel like working on something even more it's like was always pleasurable and it still is but it feels a lot more fragile now i think to be mm -hmm. working out in the landscape and and thinking about it mm -hmm. even like the luxury to be able to go outside and breathe or walk around and um you know like i said that pouch cove was on the furthest east coast um and i was there at the same time that the west coast of canada um mm -hmm. was burning so even just feeling like at the sort of you know polar I guess not polar because that would be this way these this the opposites um latitudinal opposites of the longitudinal longitudinal opposites of the, of the of you're on your own here no. yeah I know why I should I finally I, figured out weft and uh warp and weft because weft is rhymes with left so someone would help me figure that one out but I have not gotten to latitude and longitude I was just thinking that I'd go from east to weft <laughs> There you go. Um, um, so, so yeah, so just like being in the, you know, being on that part of the North American continent while the, mm -hmm. you know, this very cool temperate, you know, at this time of year on the East coast, um, very clean air quality, like while this, yeah. you know, big thing is happening on the other side and painting. Yeah. And so I, you know, the strawberry sun has, you know, to do with that too, that sort of constantly sort of feeling this like heat that's you know, and, and color and burning that's kind of permeating yeah. know, everywhere at this point. Yeah. And I think as an artist, I mean, you're obviously a, a witness. That's a big part of what being an artist is. And then, you know, you made this comment that you're, or that it was partially sparked by something that your son said. And of course we now have children and, you know, they're seeing this for the first time and it's, you know, landscape painting is a complex form that can, take in all these aspects, you know, both in terms of some kind of observational and depictive thing, but it's incredibly complicated in terms of what these kinds of, of paintings can, can do. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, I don't limit, I don't think I limit myself to that, you know, to just being landscape painter, but it's, um, it's no, you hard. don't. I mean, I mean, of course, you know, all of the things that you do with regard to all over painting and color and, and all of those things, I think I, I, came to landscape, I think I was uh, settling on landscape painting in terms of, I sometimes think of it as a very traditional form. And I think what you're doing is very radical there. And so that I think is why it has been in my my mind to talk, to think about it in terms of writing about this particular body of work. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, it's a radical time. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you go back to the other piece before it? Absolutely. Um, uh, so this piece, so, I did this, I did this sort of, I did this in Newfoundland, but not on site. I kind of, after a hike went back and um, I was just gonna add that this is sort of a variation on a painting I did a couple of years ago called The Green Man, um, mm -hmm. which was uh, a mythological, which is, I guess, a sort of Irish mythological man who kind of embodies these ideas of ecology, um, mm -hmm. which I learned about at Bob Gunderman's house. And, um, and and then so the summer I was hiking with my sister in law, and um, she was wearing green, and every in every direction it was like these different kind of like warm and cool shades of green, and um, so it kind of made me think about this idea of like the green man, but not the green man, um, changing that to the green woman, and what that mm -hmm. might kind of um, updating that that idea of this kind of mythology. Mm -hmm. What is the landscape of this particular area? Um, yeah, I'd never been up that way before. It's mm -hmm. very, you know, we're there in August, which is probably the one of the easiest times to be there and that it isn't foggy, it isn't cold, it isn't, um, you know, like the more punishing elements are, are were sort of uh, gentler at that time of year, but um, it's just very like, like just, you know, epic in every direction, big sky, big, everything is big, like big nothingness, mm -hmm. big sky, big rocks, big verticality, um, because it's, uh, the winds come so, you know, kind of fiercely off of the ocean, the tree, everything, all the trees kind of grow in 
a direction away from the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, it's all rock there. So the trees grow. They're not, none of the trees or very few of the trees are uh, tall and they're very um, kind of squat and dense. And apparently if you, you know, do a cross cut of a tree, you can't even see the rings with your eye. You have to look at them under the microscope. So it's oh, like wow. just growing so slowly and so intensely. Yeah. Um, and then the place where we were, there was very little, um, you know, to like kind of do besides walk around and, you know, paint and kind of mm -hmm. be quiet. And so that was great, you know, just to be able to have very little to focus on except for, you know, this and my family was out there part of the time. So them as well. Mm -hmm. And um, did having the sort of fellowship of other artists in a residency program, what was, what was that like? Yeah. I mean, I think any new experience, like you don't really know what the takeaway is going to be. Right. But it definitely mm -hmm. affected me in, in ways that I wouldn't have thought of. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, one thing that was great and, you know, maybe some of these folks are um, on the line here with us mm -hmm. um, was kind of every, we tried most afternoons at like four o'clock to all go on a hike together and paint um, plain air, or, you know, some people would just write, you know, in, mm -hmm. in the notebook or something. Um and so we kind of all really appreciated this idea of, we kept saying like alone together, you know, right. as an artist, you spend so much time alone. And so to be able to kind of share that here, look at that. There are some of these folks. Yeah. So obviously that's Tomary Dodge in mm -hmm. the sort of mid back, you know, kind of merging into the water. Uh -huh. um, and then there's Brent um, Carabat behind him and Claudia Riga. Um, and I, you know, just did this quickly and intentionally wanted to sort of, merge them into this space like you you know I uh didn't do like contrasting color to have them pop out so we really felt like you know in that moment that you're really mm -hmm. just kind of merged with this space um and then just to be in proximity to all of their very different and um you know adept and inspirational painting techniques and styles and palettes and just to right. kind of be around that was really grounding also I also love in your work the your just your brushwork, the stroke direction, the paint load of a given stroke. Could you elaborate just a little bit more on how that's evolved over the course of your working? Um, you know, I always like feel like the narrative parts of painting are easier to talk about. Like I walked outside sure. and we painted, and then um, I mean, sure, some of it is like think, you know, thinking of all of these painterly traditions right. um, before and like how much, like clearly my hand is very big time in the, in the painting mm -hmm. um, and the ability of like the expressiveness or things that are more depictive. Um, and then there's like, also just like the moment of doing it and you like put, you know, so, you know, you put a color on the brush like this, of course, like I was going to make this painting like completely different color and then like i think that blue you know just putting the blue on the brush right and the sort of variety of opacity um yep. and depth and uh color richness um yeah. i was like yeah okay that's that done that's good that's done great <laughs> yeah. Amazing. um and i actually this was painted on site and it was at the top of the um one of the entries of the east coast trail and i was yeah. with my niece um who's in high school and we went out and uh that was her first time doing some plain air uh, painting. And it was like a completely perilous uh, location also. <laughs> I mean, we were not, we were not in a perilous location, but we were yes. like five feet from, you know, a 200 foot drop. Um, yes. You know, it's good to get the youth sometimes just like going right, right into it. Right? <laughs> Straight on. We're going for it. We're going to go hang out on top of a cliff and look into the ocean and paint. <laughs> it does uh, feel extremely vertical. And, it's um, crazy vertical there yeah <laughs> and pushes i think a sense of verticality in terms of the abstraction and the way verticality can function in in paintings yeah it's when you're there you can see what there's very there are lots of different reasons why you can imagine why people have wanted to go there to paint um, yeah yeah well i'm also kind of like hoping not hoping but secretly wondering if the easel or whatever you were holding was like under you know if you were dealing with like 50 mile an hour winds 
in some yeah. of these locations. No, I just always paint on my lap. Other the other folks have their whole get up. Um, I, I don't. I don't. It's enough to carry the paints and the water and. So that's what I do. I just, yeah. you know, and that's why if you look some of these pieces, there's sand and rocks and stuff in it. And that's just because, you know, I'm holding on to it. Uh -huh. But yeah. Is this a building at the, at the residency? This was actually, so we, on one of the weekends, I went with my family to another couple hours away. Um, right. And so this was just sitting outside in this little town. Um, I mean, you know, people that know a little bit about Newfoundland know these these towns have these amazing names. So this was like between Heart's Desire and Heart's Content. Right. Or Heart's Delight, maybe, and Heart's Desire. Yeah. Um, and uh, someone walked, I think maybe you can see there's a figure there, like someone walked by while I was just sitting at this picnic table. And like, it was, you know, like a Brisson-esque moment, like perfectly their head was chopped off with where the railing was as they uh -huh. were walking, wearing like a tropical shirt too. Yeah. Um, walking a dog and um, so I was like I had already started painting this uh, tree and kind of then had that person make their way into the painting too yeah I love I love this I love this painting I love the depictive kind of quality that at first it somehow appears to be about a tree but then you get this whole feeling of the scene I, I this is a real favorite for me that I've been looking oh, thank at. you I, we have a lot of verticality again in this painting yeah I mean this I, I did this back in the studio, but like right after um, mm -hmm. going, I'm I don't exactly remember where this was, but you know, one of the trails kind of high, high up from the, um, you know, viewpoint from high up on the cliff and also, you know, thinking the sun, some of the rocks were really red uh, I mean, themselves, mm -hmm. like a high iron kind of quality. Mm -hmm. And when the sun hit it, it was like mm -hmm. amazingly kind yeah. of glowing orange. And then also kind of thinking of this like glowing West coast, um, you know, parallel kind of story happening. Yeah. Climate story. Is this painting done from memory or photographs? Memory, but like right, right. Like an hour after being there. Mm -hmm. And starting to really, I think it's interesting when you're back in the studio do, do you start to see possibilities of like something you've thought about or done on site starting to play into existing motifs or ways of navigating and creating space within the, within the camp, your canvases? Yeah, definitely. And especially the, it took a while there because it was such a un, different landscape than anyone. I mean, I think that happens a lot to people at residencies, mm -hmm. um, but it's so different. Um that it took a while to even figure out what that language was going to be mm -hmm. yeah. for me and how to, you know, emphasize, you know, I did some just like sitting in kind of with more local color and, you know, observationally what I see, but then trying to get a sense of like, how do I get this like massiveness into the piece or how do I get the heat? So that's like, has this sort of red, you know, on the sides um of that kind of bulging shape there yeah um so it took a while to kind of think about that or though you know the green woman painting before like how there's so much green variety of green in every direction mm -hmm. how to get that that massiveness yeah I, and this is an interesting painting this is again a painting that you that took a few years for you to figure out what you wanted to do in it even though it's yeah. not that large um yeah this was it's um well, I'm going to tell you what, and you can tell me, um, we can have a boat even. So it was, this painting existed without a boat. Yep. And I liked it, but I, it was sort of the shape of the cloud reflecting in the water. This was done on Cape Cod a few years ago, which has its yeah. own painting tradition too. Yeah. Um, and then I was just like, you know what? I'm, and I like never paint like sailboat. I paint barges, things that kind of relate more to our, like our, you know, consumer cycle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, but I don't paint boats like this that often. And then I was just like, you know, I'm just going to give it a shot. Yeah. Now yeah. everyone knows the secret. You can, <laughs> so you can decide if you visually, if it's working or not. But Yeah. And in terms of just like, um, we have a painting coming up of a of sort of that taught that's more yeah. in terms of I don't know, people in the landscape, but this is just a great, I love this. And were you, I mean, is, Yeah. Do you have any I, do you have any thoughts on on this piece? Yeah, definitely. So this was 
um, you know, for the folks who have been to this area and have hiked to Shoe Cove, there's this one massive tree. Like I said, every tree is like 15 or 20 feet tall. You almost never see a big tree anywhere. And then some somehow it's how it's up on the cliff or protected. There's this big, you know, have to hike 40 minutes. It's a pretty difficult hike, this big tree. And I did it um, actually once with Gary Evans and with Tom Marie, and then a second time with my um, sister-in-law, Adrian and niece, yeah. Rowan. And Rowan, of course, being like the teen that she is, she immediately climbed up in it. Um, and so I just loved all of that. Like this, like, you know, youthful energy, this big tree. Um, years ago, the um, late, great Rebecca Godfrey curated a show called Girls and Trees that I was uh -huh. in. And so also this idea to uh, think of like, you know, girls really um, exploring wilderness is really exciting too. So, yeah. Um, but then I wanted her to be sort of dwarfed in all of this expanse. So she kind of, again, you kind of, you don't see the figure maybe right away but it's definitely, you know, there. Yeah. Well, just the, the materiality of the painting in terms of how a motif or how a depictive motif can kind of relate to that is yeah. really the feeling here and the, the placement of that deep reddish brown kind of in the, at the bottom. It's just, yeah. I just love that. It's really great. Well, and I did the sort of staining of the tree because the tree was so different than everything else. So that's like also how the formal decision, right? Mm -hmm. How to make um, it stand out, not just with color, but with kind of surface. And then of course I was like, it looks like a weird cross, but that's, I don't know, whatever side, side, not side unintentional. <laughs> I've never, I've never thought that. So, uh, but, but, but I will now. <laughs> this painting is, uh, a Vax clinic. Um, we talked a little bit about landscape earlier. Do you want to talk about some of the critiques that you've kind of, or just a little bit about, about, you know, your kind of critiques of the Hudson River School or, or consumerism? And of course, I think, you know, the Hudson River School is kind of interesting because it's this first kind of landscape tradition in the U.S. And it's, you know, I think now it's, we can see it as a very colonial tradition in terms of native voices that people that are in these, they're not empty landscapes. And then here we are, you know, in the midst of a national pandemic going, you know, going to what I can only envision as a shopping mall parking lot and everything in there. I don't know, just do you have any thoughts or responses to that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think, you know, also, um, I really like what you pointed out about the Hudson River tradition and how we look at it now. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing is, you know, there were some of the artists, um, you know, had an ecological sensitivity. Yeah. Others were more dedicated to Manifest Destiny, which has mm -hmm. its own, mm, you know, complicated relationship to, to that. Mm -hmm. Um, but there was also a lot of romanticization of the land and disregard mm -hmm. of like all of the industrialization and mm -hmm. pollution that was happening simultaneously, um, mm -hmm. even like painting them out of the, um, yeah. painting that, not including that in the landscape. So a lot yeah. was omitted, um, mm -hmm. from the land, from the landscapes of the, that time. Um, so, you know, so some, I mean, I think you can see from the work that you've shown, like sometimes I'm just responding to what I see or thinking about the ecology and then other times, um, you know, dealing more directly with the built environment. This was mm -hmm. a shopping mall um, near here that um, was a Best Buy and then became a Vax clinic. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, kind of how to think of the sort of like, kind of dizzying saturated sort of plasticity of a shopping mall and yeah. um you know also like it's kind of reuse and that it, it it's it's a ruin in its own time so thinking of people like thomas cole painting mm -hmm. um roman or fictitious ruins like this is this mall has is very little happening it's basically a ruin so yeah um, you know thinking about about that as well um yeah, yeah. Well, you made an interest, an amazing painting that we didn't include here, but um, it's in your in the group show that we did um, called Pocket Universe. If people would like to see it, but you made this point because it's it it's called the it's a Dollar Tree, and of mm -hmm. course Dollar Tree is a brand, but it never really occurred to me that there was also an equation of 
dollars and trees. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what do we value? You know, yeah, like, I just didn't ever see that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a great one. Well, we're wrapping up the conversation here. Is there anything that you want to talk about that we didn't, we didn't talk about so far? Um, I think, you know, you and I are going to keep working together and, um, oh, very much so. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Um, spring, spring show. And, yeah. um, I don't know, there's lots to say, but I think, you know, I think yeah. everyone, <laughs> Oh, good. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. We're really delighted that you could take the time to be with us. As Lisa pointed out, there, there's a lot that's on people's minds and it's great that you could take a break and be here and think about uh, ways in which we can engage with ourselves and the world around us. Lisa, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Um, it's just really a pleasure talking to you. And as Lisa mentioned, you know, we have a show coming up in the spring that's very exciting. It's called Hyper Accumulators which will give you a sense of kind of where we're going with that. And um, if you have any questions, just let me know. And uh, have a great weekend, Lisa. Thanks so much for uh, for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. I'm going to get back to painting right now. Yes, you do that. Okay. <laughs> Talk Thank to you later. You. Bye. Bye, everybody.